Oh my goodness, what is it with the controversy between the Exynos and the Snapdragon processors? Samsung have sent us their latest flagship phone, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, to see if there really is such a big difference between the two. And we tested it, but we went above and beyond the abstract algorithm and into the daily productivity tests and more. We also reached out to Samsung for an official statement, which we will share with you during the video. And to top all that off, we reached out to the community to find out what your thoughts are on that. So buckle up and as always, get ready to be surprised. Take me for a ride, lead me to the other side. Show me on your life. If you want more honest reviews and in-depth testing of your devices, make sure you like and subscribe to see more. You guys know that there are some housekeeping first for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 1266 if you would buy it here in a store. 12 gigabyte of RAM, 256 gigabyte storage option, and yes, it has the Exynos 990 here. But you know what? We're gonna get into this very shortly. I want to share my very first experience I had with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. I unpacked it, I installed everything as you do. And you guys know I really like my wallpaper. So when I picked it up and I put my nice wallpaper on, it was almost like there was a torch in front of me. It was shining in my face, it was so bright. I can tell that Samsung has put their entire horsepower into this phone, not just size-wise, but also screen-wise. It is absolutely amazing and beautiful. And you can tell that here, I'm an apologies for the picture, but I've just put it outside. We had one day of sun again, daylight, broad daylight, midday sun, and you can see the brightness level here. You can pretty much work in sunlight with that phone. And yes, it is the mystic black version. As you can see, it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, but you know what? Put a case on as we did here and you're good to go. You guys probably know already the camera specifications. There is one thing, however, I want to point out and that is the camera bump. It is probably the biggest one you can find on any smartphone as of today. Here I'm putting it on the table and you can see when I put my finger on and it's kind of really going up and down all the time. And you know what, camera? We just received the DxO Mark for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G. And you can see that here is a 121 score. I put them all together in a list as they appear on the website. So you can see the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is on the bottom here and the phones that basically um, come before that. You can see the Samsung Galaxy 20 Ultra is just basically one point off. But you know what? If you're interested in that, go on their website. It just came out brand new. Hmm, let us know how you feel about the DxO Mark score here. It just came out, but the only thing I can say to that, a camera, any camera, is only as good as a person who is using it. Our pictures were absolutely fine. So who is this device for? Well, you know what? Purists will probably point towards the S Pen, people who like the S Pen. And yes, the stylus, it does make sense. However, a study has shown that only 60% of Node users will ever use the S Pen. So we have a 40% gray area here. But having said that, the S Pen really doubles down on its capabilities this year. It has navigation controls, gesture controls, and the latency. My God, the latency has been reduced dramatically. I was taking it out, writing on it, saving uh, stuff in a PDF file, in a Word format. I was even marking up PDF files, and it was like writing on a piece of paper, guys. I can tell you that. That was pretty much amazing. I never had a note phone before, so you can feel and hear my excitement for that. So what is it like using the Exynos chipset in the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra day in, day out? We used it for three weeks. You know what? There's a lot of heat online. I can see comments. I can see articles, even reviews on Amazon. People are feeling short changed outside the US. And I do get it. There's an apparent version of the very same phone for the very same price that seems to perform better. But hold on, some of our tests only show a marginal difference and some of our tests are actually identical. So buckle up. First one up is Geekbench 5 and you may have seen some results of that before in different videos or online, but I still wanted to show you that because not many people show you what I'm gonna show you after that. You can see single core, yes, it's pretty much in line, but multi-core, there's a huge difference, right? But when you then go to OpenCL and you can see here that the Exynos 990 chipset performs way better than the Snapdragon 865 Plus. 
Moving on to the Antutu scores, and you can see that is a huge gap here, right? You're talking about 50, 60,000 in points altogether. But bear in mind, these are all abstract algorithm. And I'm going to come to a test now that changes everything. You may or may not know this test, and it is called PC Mark for Android. And all the tests are basically based on everyday activities, not just abstract algorithm. And that is what it makes so interesting, and especially the results. On the left hand side is the result for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G with the Snapdragon 865 Plus. It is taken from the official listings of the PC Mark website. And you can see that with my Exynos 990 chipset in the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, then it is almost identical, but it doesn't stop here. I found something else when I was going through the listing itself. And look, I know there's more to it. We have some thermal challenges here as well, but I wanted to see how the Note 20 Ultra, Snapdragon 865 Plus and Exynos 990 holds up to other devices within that list. And when I was looking at the Tab S7 and Tab S7 Plus, they had the identical or almost identical score. So that means your Note 20 Ultra doesn't matter where you are in the world, pretty much has the same power. According to this test, real life daily activity test, then you tap a seven or tap a seven plus. And you know what? That is something pretty cool. So look, as mentioned, I also checked the heat challenges we had with the device. And you can see here, it got over 60 degrees at peak times. And that is probably not the best to have. The cooling system needs to be worked on. And I can see having throttling issues when you play heavy games. However, what I am concerned about is the battery life in the long term. So what I did is my usual battery test, Netflix, full brightness, same movie in a loop. And it lasted 13 hours and 21 minutes. It is a highly respectable result. So what do you do after your battery is completely depleted when you watch the same movie over and over again and Netflix? Well, you collect charging times, you make notes, right? So here we go. You have 20%, 50%, 80% and 100%. And some of you guys really like that. So why not? So look, there are many reasons why Samsung is driving this dual chip strategy worldwide. And one main reason is there is a legal patent issue going on between Qualcomm and Samsung that dates back to the 90s. However, one could argue, right, well, what about pricing? Because I pay the same price than the guys in the US, right? This is fair enough. But as so many other companies, Samsung doesn't want you to import phones from somewhere else that are cheaper or you know what, you just save a hundred bucks by doing so. And of course, all of this is not very pleasing to the end customer, right? Because they are not as forgiving as business customers, let's say. But I wanna make one more case here and wanna look at who is this device really aimed at? And we did something, we have a pretty good idea, but we did something else. We reached out to our community to see how they are using the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, in fact, any Galaxy Note phone. And we picked Brian, and this is what Brian had to say. To give you an idea of usage, it is for using the notes on site, usually building new chemical or food processing facilities for schematics and pipeline routing. Having the alternative of something that fits in a pocket to a larger tablet in the past is a great benefit. Not all, but many people are using the Note 20 phone in a business environment, or in fact, any Note series phone, right? And it makes sense because it is really for productivity reason. It is aimed at productivity. So, but the upside here really is that it can also do more powerful tasks. It takes beautiful pictures, but also does really good gaming. However, and I have a but here, if your employee comes to you and says, look, after one hour, playing a game, I can feel there is a heating issue, but also frame rate are dropping, then I probably would rethink that relationship. And realistically, the psychological fact that we all know there may be a better version out there somewhere else for the same pricing is something that sucks. But at the end of the day, it is what it is as of today. And you know, when you look at it really close at the marketing of Samsung, for example, then it really performs as advertised because it is again, advertised for productivity first and then play second. And both phones really perform the same way when it comes to daily activities. Nevertheless though, we asked Samsung for a statement and they responded. Here you go. Guys, let us know how you feel about it because we couldn't see any issues. We couldn't see any drop in performance whatsoever. Again, this is for daily usage only. So thank you for watching. Let us know in the comments below. Jens here from Alta Space. Tony, of course. Peace out. We
could turn the whole world around I'm in the backseat really trying to hold it down And if you up now from the lost and found Then get your hands up high and your shoulders down it's